Hi, so now we go on to the increasing perpetuities. So first we wanna define the increasing perpetuities. So the following cash flow is called an increasing perpetuity. So the cash flow is T is equal to zero to infinity. And in the first year, the payment is $1. In the second year, payment is $2. And the, at the t is equal to $3, $3. At nth year, the n dollars, n plus first year, n plus $1, and so on. So not only that we have the infinitely many payments, but also the payment amount goes to infinity. And still the present value of this is finite if i is positive. So basically when interest is positive that we have the exponential decay of present value. So even if we take the summation of infinitely many terms, it converges. So with a positive P for this specific case, the rate of increase of the perpetuity is N plus one over N. So you can see from Nth year to N plus first year, basically we multiply N plus one over N. But the, this amount, I mean, this multiplier the goes to one as N goes to infinity. So that means the basically the increase is negligible from year n to year n plus one if n is large. But the present value of that cash flow discounts the by one plus i, the factor of one plus i every year. So basically the uh, payment at t or payment at n, the decays the exponentially first. So the present value of um, increasing perpetuity is also finite. So, okay, so we have seen in the um, last uh, chapter that the um, last, uh, maybe the previous sections, so that, uh, that the um, perpetuities with constant payment has finite present value, but the, even the amount is e increasing linearly, the present value is finite. Yeah, so now that we wanna um, derive the formula for increasing the perpetuities. And to remember that the perpetuity formulas are uh, somewhat easier than um, annuity formula. So think about the A right angle N. So that was one minus V to the power N over I, but the increasing perpetuity, uh, sorry, the perpetuities immediate A right angle infinity, that was, just the one over i because the, this, the v to the nth power, that this converges to zero as n goes to infinity. So it is actually the simpler. And the theorem, so the, we prepare the same general argument as the corollary for increasing annuities. So think about the present value of this perpetuities that is at time one, the payment amount is P at time two, payment amount is P plus Q and at time three, P plus two Q and so on. At time N, the P plus N minus one times Q then increasing perpetually. And the present value of this cash flow is actually the P over I plus the Q over I square. So P over I part, that is similar to annuity. I mean, the usual, the perpetuity. So usual perpetuity one over I. So if the amount is P each year, that becomes P over I. But we have another term Q over I square. 
I square is a small number. So suppose that I is 1%, then I square is 0 0.0001. So Q over I gets really large, the Q times the 10,000. So since the, this payment amount is increasing, the, and also the, it's the perpetuity, the present value is much larger than the usual, uh, you know, the present value of the perpetuity. Okay, so we want to prove this one. And the proof is actually not that complicated given the formula for annuities. Okay, so present value of this one is actually the limit and goes infinity of the annuity version. And annuity of this cash flow was the P times A right angle N uh, plus Q times A right angle N times N to the power, N times the V to the power N over I. Okay, so this is a right angle N. So, yeah, so maybe we can write down a little more. So this is the limit N goes to infinity and P times a right angle N, but that is the P times one minus V to the power N over I. And the next one is the Q times AN, AN, a right angle N is one minus V to the power N over I minus N to the power V N over I. And here many times goes to zero. V to the power N, this goes to zero. So V to the power N is one plus I to the power negative N. So this goes to zero. And it, by the same reason, this term and this term, so all goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So that means this becomes much simpler. The first one, the p times one over i, so this is the p over i. And the second, the q times one over i over i, so that is the q over i square. And other times this appear. So Q over I squared. So this is the end of the proof. Okay, so now the more special case. So we consider a special, um, the standard case of increasing annuity. That is payment amount is $1 at time one and two dollar at time two, three dollar at time three, and so on. And we wanna calculate the present value of this increasing perpetuity. So the PV of the increasing perpetuity, the The defined from the original, the increasing annuity. So that is equal to one over I times D. So remember that the D is discount factor that is one minus V. So V is one over one plus I. So, so this is I over one plus I. So this is discount factor and the uh, present value is one over ID. So these somewhat similar quantity to I, slightly smaller than I. So basically that this is similar to, um, yeah, the previous, the theorem. Okay, so just, this is a special case of the above theorem. Yeah, so the, now that we wanna prove this theorem, and the PV is equal to limit and goes to infinity, increasing annuity N. 
and the dot first limit the n goes to infinity a double dot n right angle n minus n times the v to the power n over i and again the here goes to zero and the a right double dot right angle n that is one minus v to the power n over d so limit of this quantity so that is simply one over i because this term and this term so this goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So only remaining term is one over d over i. So that is one over i d. So this is one over i times d. So this is the end of the proof.